Time to play! Alright. Best wish. Ready, sweetie? I'm listening. Say night night. <laughs> Time to play. <laughs> You've been naughty. to play. Orders for me. <sighs> yes. Orders. Yes. I'm listening, stealthy Let's as can go. be. All right. Sweet dreams. Time to play. Orders. <laughs> Your life is mine. If that's what you want. <laughs> Best wishes, of course. No hard feelings, dear. <laughs> Your life is mine! Yes. Let's go. <clears throat> yes. Hi everyone, Guardian E here with another Camilla Emblem Clear video in Fire Emblem Heroes, and today we are taking on the underground lord Yuri in his very own Legendary Hero Battle on Abyssal Difficulty. So, Legendary version of Yuri is effectively a souped up version of his original incarnation in the game. Same sort of role, same sort of tactics that are being employed. Uh, main distinctive qualities is that he is going to be a red dagger unit as opposed to the colorless dagger unit that his original version is. And he has much higher damage capability, but he is still very much the same Yuri that a lot of people are very, very familiar with. So his combination of foul play, which allows him to swap with an ally from range, 
and Fetters of Dromi allows him to have a built-in Kanto 2. So that combination, in addition to the additional movement tile that Fetters of Dromi gives him as an infantry unit, so uh, at the start of the turn he does get an, a self-activated ability to move an additional movement tile, has the Kanto, has the uh, foul play, and that combination leads to a lot of movement shenanigans that I think many of us are familiar with that does allow him to kind of shoot in and out, have a lot of hit and run tactics, be able to tactically move an ally out of danger range, and then also move himself out of danger range. So there's a lot of built-in utility and play with that combination of abilities. Now, the difference, of course, in addition to him being a red dagger unit, is that his offensive capability is extremely high uh, when compared to his original incarnation. His Abyssal Blade does give him a killer slaying effect, gives him a bunch of buffs uh, that are easy to activate, gives him actual like, true damage built into his weapon as well that scales off of his speed stat, which is going to be considerable. And he also enjoys some damage reduction too, which certainly doesn't hurt, gives him some, some more survivability. Fetters of Dromi, as I mentioned, does give the Kanto 2 ability, gives him an additional movement tile, and also allows him to pseudo-negate Stahl's effect. So what Fetters of Dromi does is that it preemptively actually self-deactivates the uh, extra movement space so that he can move normally. And in addition to that, if he has stall on him, he actually inflicts a, an in-combat debuff on the enemy. So he has the ability to uh, actually negate some of the uh, some of the counters effectively that worked, I guess, particularly well on the original version of Yuri. Now that's his default kit. Uh, in addition to that, they decided to add on to him Blazing Wind, interestingly enough, as well as Hardy Bearing. So they thought they were being pretty sneaky here with Hardy Bearing, that is uh, naturally going to be a counter to any Desperation type units as well as Vantage type units, which would include Ninja Camilla, right? Uh, but Blazing Wind over here is also going to, he's also going to enjoy effectively an insta cooldown uh, on Blazing Wind so he can proc it at the first initiation. And I will say overall, the map composition does play to his strengths a lot because you have the pillars over here that does limit the movement and engagement opportunities against Yuri up front. That is, I think, one of his weaknesses is that he is sort of a glass cannon. Extreme mobility, a high damage output, but it's not like he can tank a ton. Even with that damage reduction that's built into Abyssal Blade, he's not really meant for tanking, he's not meant for enemy phasing, and so this does limit the capability of, uh, of engagement points against him without putting your own units in extreme danger. And then there's a lot of reinforcements, of course, uh, of various uh, movement types, weapon types, color types, all that jazz. So let's take a closer look at the Camilla team that we brought with us today. So we have Vanilla Camilla here, of course, plus 10, 15 Dragon Flowers, attack and speed assets, uh, summoner support, has Arcane Downfall with attack refine, reposition, ether, distant stance, quick repost four, joint distant guard, and attack defense form three for the seal. I do often swap around the flex slot of the seal. In this case, I went with attack defense form just to give her a little bit more damage output when she's enemy phasing. Next, we have New Year's Camilla, plus 10, 10 Dragon Flowers, speed asset has Arcane Eljuthnir with attack refine, reposition, gale force, heavy blade 4, dive bomb 3, goad flyers, and death blow 3 for the seal. Next up on deck we have Brave Camilla, plus 10, 15 dragon flowers, summoner support, attack and speed assets, has her native Sangreether, return plus for the assist, holy pressure for the special, attack speed catch 4, poetic justice, goad flyers, and attack res catch 3 for the seal. And finally we have Midnight Bloom Camilla, Ninja Camilla, newly minted at plus 10, plus 5 dragon flowers, attack and res assets, has her native flowery scroll, reposition, glimmer, close salvo, seal res 4, attack res hold, and attack res form 3 for the seal. So more or less the overall strategy here was to thin the ranks by enemy phasing most of the oncoming troops and reinforcements, waiting for Yuri to take his initial steps and use the foul play Kanto uh, and the additional movement tile combination uh, and use it so that he will overextend and then take him out on player phase. So first and foremost, we're going to shift up Vanilla Camilla here up into the danger range of basically most of the units on the initial wave. Uh, and she can actually tank all of that handily with her kit and her high mixed defenses and her damage reduction. Uh, and with the constant proc of Aether, just, she'll just get back all of her health every single time. Uh, it's really quite a beautiful thing to see. I may be a little biased in that regard, but yeah. I mean, she, she handles effectively every troop uh, on, the, on the initial wave. And then we have a set of reinforcements. So the only surviving troop from the first wave of reinforcements is the Swordfighter down here, and we can handily take him out with Brave Camilla on player phase here. 
We've got the Green Thief down here. We're going to allow Vanilla Camilla to continue to just tank the offensive capabilities of the enemy team. We're actually going to allow New Year's Camilla to shift up here and take on the Axe Cavalier. The Axe Cavalier has color disadvantage as well as Triangle Adept, so they're really going to do no damage, and that's just going to help charge Camilla's Gale Force in the process. We're just going to shift Ninja Camilla up here to provide support for Vanilla Camilla and stay out of the danger range, but just close enough to be able to uh, capitalize on the following turn. And of course, Vanilla and New Year's. Both of them are going to be able to take on their troops. So at this point, what would an Abyssal map be without a Troubadour, uh, which is worth noting, as well as the Green Bow, of course, with the effective damage against Flyers. Now, the Troubadour has Restore Plus, and that's really important to note just because she can negate the penalties that are inflicted on Yuri. I think one potent strategy that you could employ is to inflict gravity on Yuri. Uh, however, the Troubadour with Restore Plus is going to heal that. Of course, another thing worth noting, uh, the Swordfighter over here has Godlike Reflexes as well as Odd Tempests, so they will, will have an additional movement tile uh, on odd number turns. Now, this turn is actually deceptively important uh, and critical because this is the first turn that Yuri starts to move, and his first uh, action is most likely going to be a Foul Play Swap. And so what I want to do is make sure that whatever units are remaining are as far away as possible or far from him as possible so that he overextends and can't just Kanto all the way back. So uh, in order to do that, I'm actually going to employ the strategy of sitting and waiting. Uh, we're going to have Vanilla Camilla just sit here because she's actually going to be able to tank both the Sword Fighter and the Blue Mage. And in this engagement, the Sword Fighter is the one that's going to remain alive. And he's going to be right over here, which is going to, as you'll see, in this following turn, um, that, that's the max range that Yuri can use Foul Play, which will effectively mean that he's overextended and can't just hide back behind the pillars. Um, so he just kind of scoots on over here to the side, but that does leave him fully exposed. And, you know... <laughs> Intelligent Systems and Yuri thought they were clever with this hardy bearing, but that certainly does not help when he is being player phased. So we're going to use Ninja Camilla to engage on him and take him out in one turn with that Glimmer proc. Uh, Ninja Camilla is perfectly comfortable here, actually, against both the Sword Fighter and the Green Flyer. The Troubadour here is going to prioritize healing the Sword Fighter, so uh, she, she's actually not going to attack. And then uh, we do have to worry about the green bow, but we're just going to shift down so that New Year's Camilla can engage on the following turn. So Brave Camilla is going to take out this Lance Knight. The Lance Knight does have the charge skill, so just be aware of that too, because he does have deceptive movement range and then uh, or warping capability. And then we're going to, again, sit pretty with Vanilla Camilla. She is effectively just a wall uh, throughout the entirety of this battle, uh, just tanking everything and leaving... You know, destruction at her feet. So uh, Ninja Camilla obviously able to handily take out those two units and then we're going to reposition New Year's Camilla up. Really I can take them out any which way but I'm going to use New Year's Camilla, let her shine a bit, uh, take out the green bow here, activate Gale Force in the process which will allow her to move forward and take out the Troubadour on player phase. So that is the strategy that I employed with Camilla Emblem to clear Legendary Yuri on his very own Legendary Hero Battle on Abyssal Difficulty. Let me know in the comments below what strategies and teams you end up using to clear this Abyssal Level Challenge. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like, leaving a comment, subscribing for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching, for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really, really do appreciate it. And until next time, let's protect those skies.